the, the main crux of why we need to do what we need to do. How many of y'all believe there really is a heaven? And how many of y'all believe there really is a hell? And I lost the feet on this. Somebody wants to help me on that. Um, it's not 50 years. It's not 70 years. It's forever. Forever, n- nobody can really wrap their mind around forever. How many of y'all think that 80 is old? Raise your hand. I do too. How many of y'all think 100 is definitely old? I met a guy this week that his, his dad was 112 when he died. I said, man, you got a long way to go. So, but but that, that, that's not much in compared to forever. So then God puts the responsibility on you and I to realize that the sum total of our life is to try to reach people that are far from Jesus because when you die and you will, there's only two places you can go. You can go to heaven or you can go to hell. I, I, I like to go up. How about you? If you're on an elevator, I don't even want to go down. I want to go up. Moving on up, right? We want to go up. Everybody shout, I want to go up. But the saddest thing would be is to go up and not take anybody with you. The Bible talks about that some of the things that are happening uh, that will happen throughout eternity, in fact, even right now, if you were in hell, part of hell is torture and part of hell is looking over into heaven and seeing how wonderful it is. Part of hell. The Bible said hell is a place that is expanding. By the way, nobody talks about hell anymore. Hell is expanding. It's in a building program because it can't hold the inhabitants. Just too many people going to hell. There's a song that said there's a highway going there. So uh, the Bible said that broad or wide is the way that leads to hell. But narrow is the road that leads to eternal life. Eternal life. That means you're going to live forever. There's an old song, and I'll quit screwing around with it, Tim. We'll figure out technology during the week. And technology is something else, isn't it? It just, just never works. And they'll, they'll tell me, it worked all during pre-tech. Yeah, of course, the devil wasn't worried about that. Give it up for Tim. He's, he's a boss in the whole team. Great guy. So there's this responsibility that God put on us that we're supposed to tell everybody everywhere about Jesus. The Bible said this in Proverbs 13, 20. I don't think it's in my notes, but it's in my heart. It said, he that winneth souls is wise. So my dad would say flip-flop that. When you read the Bible, a lot of times it's flip it. So he that winneth souls is wise, then... He that doesn't win souls would be foolish. So you always ought to be winning because it's not just about how do I look in the culture? What are people going to think of me? It's what when they go to hell where there's dying and gnashing of teeth and 24 hours a day, they want to die, but they can't die. And people tell you, when I get to hell, I'll just make ice water. No, you won't because there's none there. So we need to realize the severity of heaven and hell. So we want to go to church and it's great. We sing songs and it's great. We have fun and it's great. We go to groups with our friends. We this Saturday, we're going to have free shirts and say, this is my Saturday shirt. You got to get a hot dog. You're going to have a great time. But that's really not what the church is about. The church is where that song that we sing where I've seen cancer disappear and I've seen broken bodies healed. And don't you tell me what he can't do. And so every week at all of our campuses, we need to go everywhere telling everybody about Jesus. Well, I don't think it's popular. Well, you're talking to the wrong people. You're talking to the liberal media who is convincing you because they work for the devil that church is bad and people think church is bad. The fact is church is good. Come on, somebody. (laughs) So our job is to win people to Jesus. And we win people to Jesus by just having conversations with people. My daughter's in Nashville right now writing songs for Sony and for, I don't know, Capitol Records. And today there's the woman who hired her to write songs. She's got three or four of the best-selling Christian songs in America today. And she asked Ashton to write a song with her, which is 
incredible. She called me and she said, Dad, you'd be proud of me. The song was going negative and it was in the valley. And I knew what my dad would say. She's up out of that valley. People don't need to be depressed. They need to know we walk by faith and not by sight. So she said, I said, hey, don't you think it's going a little negative? How about we bring it up? She said, that's a good idea. So you hear Danny Gokey on the radio and he says, he's preaching about faith, singing about faith. And then nine out of 10 songs will be about, we're going through the mud and the crud and Christians are dud. Right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You ever listen to Christian radio? Sometimes you're like, I can hear it from a mile away. Sounds the same. And I'm semi-depressed. I would rather hear, highway to hell. At least I know that's wrong. <laughs> so there's, there's a generation of people being raised up that is going to change the atmosphere of radio. That's going to change the atmosphere of movies. It's going to change the atmosphere of church. And our job is to tell everybody everywhere that God's still on the throne, that Jesus has still got the whole world in his hands. And you got to say it, spray it, wheel it, deal it, make them feel it. Can I get an amen in Florida? So we got to win them. So you win them through conversation. So yesterday when I was in Nashville, um, I, I flew back and the coast was going to take me to the airport and the Bellman guy came and he got the luggage. When he did, immediately, I do what I always do. How you doing? What's your name? Tell me the name. Give him a 20. Oh, thank you. Don't break any of my bags. There's more if you get down there. And I say, where do you go to church here in Nashville? Assuming he goes. And then nine out of 10 times, I don't go to church. I'll disadvantage the to church. And this was a rare occurrence. This guy said, actually, I don't go to church in Nashville, sir. I go to church in Tulsa online, a guy named Mike Todd. And I said, oh, this guy? I pulled up a picture of me and Mike. No way. But the fact is, I was trying to get him safe, but he was already safe. I love this when people, this is my, the, the, the most fun you could possibly have is when you get in a car with somebody in an Uber and they try to get me safe. That is a blast, <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, man, what do you do? <laughs> you know, you, do you know Jesus? No, not really. <laughs> you go to church, I don't like it. And they start selling me and I'm like, yeah. And then at the end, I'm like, I was just pulling your chain. I just wanted to... I'm sure to tell you, though, that everybody everywhere needs to be on the mate because we don't need any uh, secret service Christians. You're in the army. Get on the street. Reach people. Pray for people. Lay hands on people. Go to the hospital and witness to people. Go to a nursing home. They're bored and sing to them. I can't sing. They can't hear you. This is perfect. They want to visit. So if you, if you want to do what God wants you to do, you'll win people to Jesus. Let's go to Romans 10, verse 13. Everyone who calls for help, help God, gets it. But how can people call for help if they don't know who to trust? And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard the one who can't be trusted? And how can they hear if nobody tells them? And how is anyone going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it? That's why the scripture claims Thank you, I'll say that. I just heard the Lord say that so many people are allowing the current culture to affect their kingdom culture. How can they hear? Well, I don't want to tell them it'll make them mad. It might make them glad. Plant the seed in their heart and, 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 and love on people so they know at least who to call on if something did go bad. They call on you because you would, you would witness to them and, and you would love them. Mark 4, verse 21, it says, Then Jesus asked them, Would anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket? are under a bed and to shut out the light? Of course not. A lamp is to be placed on a stand where the light will shine. This is 
prophetic prophecy, if you will, that Jesus was put up high on a stand so he could be the light of the world called the cross. And when they pierced his side and they put the you know, crown of thorns on his head and he died for us, he did not just die to like give you a Cadillac. He didn't die just to heal your arthritis, uh, your, uh, your sciatica. Uh, he, he died so you could go to heaven and so you could tell everybody everywhere, this is incredible. When people think stuff's good, they like to talk about it. I'm talking about life right now. I was in a pawn shop buying the color rings. She likes to go to pawn shops and buy cheap rings for a couple hundred dollars and she puts them on and she's got a bunch of little bitty rings for this is a hundred dollars or she found this for two hundred dollars and then when people say they like them she gives it to them and everybody goes oh my god Nicole Crane gave me a room and that's one of the joys of her life and uh, we went to this pawn shop and there's this guy over here who doesn't know Jesus but I'm just striking up conversation with him talking about him and then we talk about DVDs for a minute. I said, you know what's really cool is about these DVDs. You know, you ought to buy DVDs because, I mean, they give you these DVDs. And the, the guy that owned a pawn shop said, take as many as you want. I can't sell them. You can have them. So I said, man, I'm definitely taking Bruce Willis. <laughs> I'm joking around. And this guy told me, he said, there's a show on Netflix you got to watch. And he started, he doesn't know me. He starts telling me about this show on Netflix. He starts telling me what series, how many it is, what's happening. He loved this show. He convinced me so much about this show. I got out my phone and emailed myself the name of the show. <laughs> I don't even watch Netflix. I'm like, do we have it? Nicole said, yes. I'm like, I got to watch this show. <laughs> this dude was jacked up about the show. It was, it was in the back of my mind. And then we got home. And I thought, man, what's the name of that show? <laughs> Pull it up my email, and there it is. My point is, is that guy was an evangelist for that show. He didn't know the people. He wasn't making any money. All he knew was the show was good. <laughs> How many of y'all wondering what the show was? Yeah. It was <laughs> I clicked on it for a few minutes. It was some guy that I probably shouldn't even share. It's Tuesday night. Come on, help me here. This but... Um, forget what it's called, uh, I think it was called Our Father, and the dude like was a doctor, and he was supposed to be artificially inseminating these women, well, he had artificially inseminated a uh, hundred that we know of, so he had a hundred little babies in the same town, and they all got to marry each other, and I just want to tell you, that guy was such a good evangelist, I done told you guys all about Our Father, <laughs> which ain't in heaven, come on somebody, because this joker at a pawn shop convinced me, this is how it spreads! can't believe I told you that, but then when I got in there, I redeemed myself, right? I'm like, put a bow on it. <laughs> but when you're excited about it and you like it, you tell everybody, we've got the greatest show in the whole world. We really do have our father, which is in heaven, who sent Jesus to die on a cross for us. And we got to say it everywhere because the world is confused. Disney is confused. America is confused. But God, his house and his church is not confused. Give God praise in this house today. They're, they're lost. Luke 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man came to, why did he come? He came to seek and save that which was lost. People are lost. Mental health issues oftentimes are, 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 are accelerated because of a sense of loss. Lost the family, lost my hope, lost my job, lost, loss. They're lost. So if we just walk down the road and go, I don't want to make anybody mad. I don't want to tell anybody the truth. I don't want to share my faith. Well, that would be terrible. You got to love everybody everywhere. And if you love them, you'll tell them about Jesus. If you love them, you'll harass them about going to church. And there's some people that are more prone to do it. I'm, I'm more of an evangelist. I'm always 
selling it, have since I was a little kid. I was trying to get people saved when I was a little boy. It's a different kind of thing. Uh, Cynthia Mandel there in Florida, she's always bringing people to church. She brought everybody from her boss to her ex-boss to the last boss who she said, he shouldn't even be our boss, but I want to get saved because he's a terrible boss. He's not even there anymore, but he, she, did, she was like, you know what? He's on his way to hell. I need to at least help him. So you got these people, you know, uh, again in Florida, I'm thinking of Mustang Sally. She's an evangelist. Rich, man, let's go for Rich Cyborg. Rich goes to the Cadillac dealer to get some car work done. He keeps harassing the Cadillac guy until the Cadillac guy is kind of sick of hearing it. And then last uh, Saturday, I think, maybe, Saturday night, I'm walking to RPC. I see a guy. I see his wife. I see his kids. And he goes, hey, I, it's so good to meet you. I've never met you. I've been coming for about five weeks. He said, Rich, invite to me, I'm the Cadillac guy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're the Cadillac guy? Yeah, he said, actually, my son now, he's working in lighting. My daughter's getting ready to be on the worship team. And I just gave $500 to the Billy program in Illinois because guess what? Tell everybody everywhere about Jesus and his church. At the Cadillac dealer, at the Starbucks dealer, at Target, at Walmart, when you're in your pajamas, just tell everybody everywhere about Jesus. Say it, spray it. We got something great. He's not just good, he's great. Matthew 18, verse 12. By the way, at all the places I preach, you guys are the most fun. When I get back here, I'm like, man, what a fun church. I go to other places and the people just sit there, they're quiet, they end up making me mad, and we just have a fight. I'm like, I'm going home to my people. People, who are you? Who? What? God forbid I tell him I was in a pawn shop talking to a man about artificial insemination. Come on, somebody. Only this church right here would get that. <laughs> Pete's probably in Florida with his short pants on going. Eh. Matthew 18, verse 12. How thank you if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them go astray. Does he not leave the 90 and 9 and go after to the mountains and seek, seek, seek the one which has gone astray? Got to go after that one. That one. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus said if a man had all these sheep, he ain't worried about the 99. He, where's the one? And you and I have somebody that we're called to go get. Now you're always gonna be selfish and be like, I want my kids. I want my cousin them. I want Bubba and them. Okay, Bubba and them ain't gonna listen to you. But if you sow the seed of witnessing, inviting, changing lives into someone else that you don't really necessarily care about, it'll harvest back and God will send somebody along the path to your family member that will make an impact. So you just got, you just get to do it. You see these signs that people let you know what they are. You know? Like right now, every kid's got a Bass Pro hat on. Anybody ever notice that? That's great, I love it. I just want to go up and ask them, name five fish right now. <laughs> just five. <laughs> ah, tuna? What's the guy from Mimo? Okay. But people wear their Bass Pro hat. You walk down the street and you go, hey, there's a Harley guy. There's an Amish guy. And you can look. There's a Trump guy. He's got his hat on, his flag in the back of the truck. Here's a Biden guy. Here's a this guy. Here's a that guy. Everybody's selling their thing. So we, I think it's, it's one of the reasons I love our church merch is because, you know, if you're going to wear something, wear something that says, you know, if you're lost, call this number, <laughs> right? You call the number, go, and there's a recording that says, if you're lost, basically, at the end of the trail, you need to get to faithchurch.com, and we're going to tell you about Jesus, and you will be found. So you need to wear merch that talks about Jesus. You need to wear hats that talk about Jesus. You need to use your car as a billboard that says, follow me to Easter, <laughs> Right? Some of you are so good, you just leave it on. It's July. People are like, man, 
This person don't update their signage. But you're like, I ain't updating my signage so the church give me something else. But I love that. It says, we're proud of Jesus. We're proud of our church. Here's who we are. We're proud of Harley, but I'm not a Harley guy. It's fun, isn't it? Does anybody else have as much fun as I'm having? I'm just having a really, just really having a, a good time. Still can't get over how tall Joel is. My gosh. <laughs> Romans 10 verse 14 says, how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they've not heard? And how should they hear if they don't have a preacher? Luke 14 verse 23. This is red, if you're, when you're reading the Bible and it's a red letter edition, it'll come up red, it's Jesus is speaking and Jesus said, and they said unto him, Lord, the servant go into the highways and byways and compel them to come into the house that it may be filled. Empty seats are a big deal to God. Compelling. Jesus is telling the story and he said, uh, I, I made a big supper. And he invited his team, the people that were in his in his church, basically, in his peer group. And then one guy, if you read it, it says, hey, I just got two yoke of oxen. I can't go. I got to go try it out. In other words, God blessed them. And they said, hey, God, you know, I just got two new UTVs and a four-wheel drive Dodge Dooley. I can't come. I got to try this out on the weekends. I worked in the week. I got to go. Another guy comes up and says, oh, hey, God. This is actually in the Bible. Jesus said, I can't go. I just got married. You know what I mean? We ain't leaving the house. <laughs> it's a true story. And they all start making excuses. And Jesus says, what? I prepared this great supper. He said, go into the highways and byways and compel them, the people that are broke, the, the, the maimed, the hopeless, the downtrodden, the people who don't have any money and bring them into the house so they can enjoy the feast at the table. That's what the sermon's about. So here's the takeaway for you. Be careful when God blesses you. Because when God blesses you, it might be a curse. Could be. I like to think that people can handle both and I've seen it happen. Money will magnify, blessing will magnify what you already are. If you're generous and you're broke, you'll be generous when you got money. I watch it happen when we go feed the homeless and, and help people. You'll go give one homeless guy a bunch of bags of Doritos and food and, and he might take a bunch. I've seen it and thought, well, he seems to be greedy. He's taking a bunch. And I've been really shocked many, many times that if you're in our homeless ministry, you'll see it. They'll just go share. Yeah. What? Yeah. So I know if that guy ever had money, he's generous. I, by the way, want to pause and say that I love our church because this week uh, we were in Florida and there was a, uh, quite a few people, young, 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 young people in the area that you could tell they didn't have any money and they were, because we we're giving away chips, you know, and stuff, and they were getting five and six bags of Doritos and they were walking past me going, Pastor Dave, thank you. And they were leaving. I didn't look at them and think, they're taking so many. I thought, this is so cool because mom and dad probably didn't have enough money to buy gas. They certainly couldn't buy them Doritos and they got to come to church and go, you know what? I don't like to preach it, but my God, you know, those cool ranch Doritos. Bless up, praise up. And you paid for that. Give yourself a hand for tithe and offering to bless people. So what I don't, what we never did at Faith Church, we never, a lot of people do this and I, 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 I sort of say I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but personally I, just, I do, I don't like it. It's like, we're gonna build a church and so what we do is we need to do a demographic study of the area and we need to know that there's a Home Depot and a Lowe's and a Cracker Barrel within one mile of that because we know that that's where families live. And so they do all this demographic church and we never did. Like we built a church in Earth City where nobody lived. <laughs> right? 
So we've built a lot of churches in terrible parts of towns, but it's brought in what people would, a lot of church people would say, the wrong kind of people, but I'll say it's the right kind of people and we've changed the way they think and elevated their life and I couldn't be more proud. We're changing the nation. Come on, somebody. So we ain't never did no study. Matthew 9, verse 35. Jesus went about the cities and the villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He was preaching the gospel, the good news. That's what that means, good news. Jesus went about preaching. And so when we're on television, we're preaching. On Way FM there in Florida, we buy a ton of time on on radio preaching. Billboards in both cities are preaching, telling it everywhere. And that's great. That's like throwing out a big net. (laughs) But you can never say it's the church's job to win the people that you're called to win. So you got to get that pole and you got to put that line in the water and you got to get that person at work and you got to reel them in. You got to go get that neighbor up the street that you know is going through a divorce, is having a hard time, that lost their job and you got to tell them, I'm going to bring you to church this Saturday night because we got this thing. It's not even really like church. There's this incredible thing that we're doing. It's a big party afterwards and there's, what kind of music do you like? Oh, I like you too. Okay, our band is kind of like you too, only better. And the light is better than that and I want you to go to church with me. The only only thing you're going to regret is you're going to just promise me that you're not going to hurt me that I didn't try to get you there sooner but they'll come and they're going to experience the life change that you experience but if you don't tell them they're not going to know so don't worry about if they're black or white or republican or democrat or jew or confused tell everybody everywhere that Jesus is Messiah that Jesus is coming back people get ready Jesus is coming back you need to go to church Pray at church, serve at church, raise your kids in church. I'm almost done. It was a little late, but I appreciate the effort. Second Timothy 2, 17. It says, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Sound mind. You ought to memorize that. That's a good one. You talk about the best mental health scripture. I'm afraid. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. I'm about to lose my mind. No! I have a sound mind, I have a stable mind, I have a balanced mind, I have a sharp mind, I have a brilliant mind. I have the mind of Christ. So don't allow the devil to try to tell you, don't tell them about Jesus, they'll think you're weird. They already think you're weird. (laughs) At least let them know why. (laughs) A healthy church needs babies and old people and all in between. If I go to church and there's a bunch of blue hair, I go, oh, this place is dead, it's gone, It's, it's over. Ain't nobody here. It's too loud. Somebody sat in my seat. (laughs) Or you got a church over here and it's nothing but young people and it has no balance of the old. That's why you have to go to a church that has what we've got, which is this beautiful dynamic of admiring and getting wisdom from the gray and the years of experience. But then we need to make sure when we get old, we're like, I don't like that young music. Dylan's pants are too short and his shirt's out. Got a hat on. Dylan likes it, and I like it. I like pretty much anything Dylan does. Christina, everybody gonna, people gonna gripe about stuff, man. Every week somebody doesn't like what I wear. They don't like what I say. My whole life would be upside down if I cared what people thought. I have to go, you know what? Find another church, and when you get bored, come back. I won't be mad at you. Just, and they always do. You'll see them a year later. 
wonder how Pastor Dave's going to treat me. I'm going to treat you great. I'm going to come up and say, you're back. (laughs) (laughs) We're called, guys. We're appointed. We have to get ourselves in the game. We got to get out there and realize people are not going to just wake up in heaven. They're not just going to wake up in church. I'm so proud of people like Kobe. You know, he's an incredible, uh, you know, student and ball player. And even when he was getting all these awards, and he'd, you'd see him at church on the weekends. Why? Because mom and dad raised him in church. They just kept going. When they felt like going, when they didn't come, feel like going. And again, evangelism, if it hadn't been for television, we probably wouldn't have reached them. But you cannot believe the lie that your job is to, I just give money and the church should buy some airtime and get some people. No, 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 no. You have to. The Bible said, he that when it sells is wise. You just got to. Just go for it. Like your heart will pound. You get scared. And then you'll get that person that wants to argue about something. And the best way to do that is just not argue. Like, I'm not here to argue. I am not a theologian. I didn't go to Bible school. All I know is I, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I'm telling you my story. When I watched the show, it changed my life. And they'll go home and have to deal with it because they're just trying to punk you to get ready. I'm a Satanist. I'm an atheist. Oh, you are. For God so loved the world. Everybody. From the worst sinner to like the person that technically should go to heaven if it was based on merit. He loved them all. But then he put you and I here in 2022 to say, come Wednesday, come tomorrow. Thursday and Friday. When you're selling a house, you're selling Jesus. When you're giving a bid on a roof, you're selling Jesus. When you're getting gas, easy to sell Jesus because they're in desperation right now. <laughs> this is easy. Find common denominators and, and, um, and just be normal. Just talk to people. People want to talk. I heard about an old lady that, i try to get this joke right, I just thought of it. She was standing in line for like 40 minutes to buy stamps at the post office. And the, he got up and the postmaster said, you know, there, ma'am, there's a machine right there that you could just put your credit card in and it would have given it to you. She said, yeah, but who would I told about my arthritis? <laughs> she needed to tell somebody about her day. And there's a lot of people like that. Just want to talk. Sometimes in Florida, the last last week, a Chick Fil A. I'll just go sit in there and eat. Cobb salad, no dressing, spicy chicken fillet, no bun, in a cup. <laughs> sit down, and I watch people come in. And I watch the in Boynton Beach. There's a manager there. His name's Dave. And Dave's at the door. Hey, Don. Hey, Bob. And I'm noticing something that a lot of people aren't going through the drive through because they want to go in and see Dave. I went in there one day last week and Dave was sitting over in the corner as a civilian watching it all. I looked at him and said, you're off duty. You must love it here. He said, I do. It's the best place in town. He was watching all the managers and he's watching all that was going on because he loved Chick-fil-A. I love Chick-fil-A. But I don't love Chick-fil-A like I love the church. I was looking at Dave going, Jay, Dave, you know, I don't think chicken's the end game for you. You seem to love people. You seem to be outgoing. Do you really want to sell chicken the rest of your life? Do you want to ask people if they want the sauce? Dave, I think you're a pastor. In fact, honestly, I think he is. So he's trying to do something that 
to, to make people feel good and his personality is outgoing and he's, he's looking and he's, he's clinging it up and no matter what happens, he's saying, and he's telling the guys, you didn't say it, my pleasure, man. He's culturizing people. He's making people think better and they're chick fil A's paying people good. Uh, in fact, uh, some of our pastors are leaving to go work there. Pastor Phil starts next week. Come on, somebody, I'm just kidding. But the point, the point is, is that chicken's good, but it doesn't save a life. So find something that has a purpose. As I close, if there's no E-R-O-I, everybody knows about R-O-I, but if there's no eternal return on investment, it really doesn't count. You can have all the money in the world, But if your kids go to hell, that's not good. And it's tough. I've done a lot of funerals. My dad wouldn't do them. I was doing funerals as a very young man. So my dad said, I don't marry and I don't bury. He does. <laughs> as soon as he died, I said, Omar, you're the guy. And that joker went to heaven on me, so I've assigned it to Phil and Austin and other people. But the point is, is that it's very uncomfortable when you do a funeral and you're pretty sure the person went to hell. You're skating around it while you're preaching and you're talking around it. And all you can really do is not talk about that. You just got to talk about there is a heaven to, and, and preach there. I remember one time in South County, I was doing uh, a young kid was 18 and overdosed on heroin. And while I was preaching the thing, two other little heroin addict kids passed out standing up, just gorgeous kids just fell over and passed out, had to call in the paramedics and they're, they're dying like crazy. At a funeral, they're doing Ferguson Florissant Campus. We bought that. That was nothing but an extended funeral home because so many young kids up there in that culture are doing drugs, selling drugs, and, and they're dying. And I asked the funeral home director, some of you will remember this story. I went in and said, what do you think the answer is? And he said, I think we need, and he wasn't even a Christian, I think the church needs to get relevant. That's when I decided I was going to buy the church. Because I thought, we are relevant. We're very relevant, and we're going to go up there and make a difference. And we did. And it's packed out. And it's growing like crazy. And people are serving at Ferguson Flores. And, and you need to maybe, you know, go here on a Saturday night and go there on a Sunday morning. Go to all of our churches and serve at them and work at them. Everybody stand and join the holy people who stood. It will encourage me to shut up. Well, I think about, I got a text on Father's Day from a guy who's in prison. He said, happy Father's Day. And I said, hey man, happy Father's Day to you. And I looked out tonight and I saw the airings and I, I thought about how your life has been changed in a big way. But if, but if Todd, who's in prison today, had not had talked you guys into coming to church, You probably wouldn't be here. Todd didn't go. He, he thought it was great, but he, he didn't really have time. And then the money, he was just making so much money. And you, you got the Lambo and the house of the lake and all that stuff. And you just got to be careful because, man, you just start chasing the money. And it'll just get you and bite you in the tail before you know it. If it takes you out of church, don't do it. I got a car. Don't do it. I got to go to the fair to represent my whatever. Well, there's a there's a art basil. Listen, if anything takes you out of church, just it's a hard uh-uh. No. I'll catch you after church. No, I got I got tickets on the field of the of the football game. Will you call them when you are sick and see if they'll come visit you? See if that little leather thing full of hot air will heal you. It won't. Not against football, but everything is prioritized. It's church first. It's God first. It, 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 it's not even family first. It's God first and then family. God's the one that gave you the family. Y'all see what I'm saying? You go to church. And for sure right now you need to go to church. 
I've never seen it like so crazy. It's our time to shine. So tell everybody everywhere. Stretch your hands toward me and nobody looking around, but how many would give me a nod here and online and say, yeah, I'm Pastor David, I, I, I know I am lagging in the evangelistic department. Just nod your head at me. I mean, I, I got to get evangelistic. I got to, when I'm working out, I'm telling them about it. God, first of all, we repent. We say we're sorry for not sharing it everywhere we go. What if it was the last day that the person ever had an opportunity to receive Jesus? We're going to do it. We're not going to let anything stop us from sharing Jesus and inviting people to church. Even this Saturday, we're going to go out and we're going to tell people, get to church, go to church. I can't go Saturday. Okay, well, then you're going to go to Sunday with me. You're, I'm tired of these excuses. I, I don't have a ride. I'm going to come get you. I'm going to deliver you to church myself. God, if, we, if you were inconvenienced and you went to the cross and came out of your holy habitation in heaven, we can drive somewhere and get somebody. God, in fact, lead us to people that are, that, 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 that can't go. They don't have the money or don't have a car. God, you bless us with the car. We're on divine assignment. You pay our gas. So we're just going to go get them. And the church alive is worth the drive. So we'll, we'll drive wherever and do whatever to get people in church because it'll change their life. And we don't go to church alone. We bring people to church. This isn't a, a club that we just belong to. No, we, 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 we're going to go out and reach them and bring them in. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. And amen. Yeah, go ahead. Give the Lord praise. Shout out to